Manscaped is here to up your body grooming game. Manscaped has the revolutionary electric trimmer, the Lawnmower 3.0. It's cordless, it's waterproof, and it's guaranteed not to nick or snag your nuts or your chest because you can use it upstairs and downstairs. So go to manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. If you're watching this on video and the room looks a little different, it's because I finally moved. I've been bitching about this for weeks, but I moved and I am recording in my new wardrobe room. We haven't put everything away yet because we have way too much shit, which is why there's all this stuff behind me. But today I have a special guest and I'm so excited to have her here. Uh, It took us a minute to get this finally set up. We had a couple of speed bumps, but I'm so excited to finally have the one and only Shyla Jennings here. Shyla, how are you? Hi, <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> I know it's so great to see you. So we had a, we had this set up a couple of weeks ago and yes. Shyla ran into an issue that her entire state ran into and oh, yeah. had probably the best experience ever, best experience. <laughs> Probably the best excuse, definitely not best experience, best excuse ever to reschedule. And that is because you live in Texas and you guys had a crazy storm and crazy. you lost all your power and everything, yes, right? For days, for three days, three and a half, three, some, something like that. It felt like so forever, what- though. <laughs> it felt like it was weeks and it was only a few days, but I was lucky enough that my husband went and got propane and you know, he really set us up. So I was one of the lucky ones that I had, you know, heat in my home and we had like lanterns going and I have like a little mini library. So I was okay. Yeah. (laughs) That must've been crazy though. It's funny. You don't realize how much you rely on, you know, everyday things like power and heat and all of these running water. Uh, Yeah. It's away from you. Yeah, it definitely made me think like I take these things for granted sometimes, but it woke me up. <sighs> Boy, did it wake me up. I mean, yeah, it's just, it was, it was crazy, but yeah, I was lucky. So, yeah. So Shyla, you have been doing something, doing certain types of scenes <laughs> that I think nobody ever expected you were going to do. And I saw you (laughs) creeping into the boy girl arena kind of slowly. Like you started off doing softcore and then I think you did DJ. So tell us about this journey. What made you decide to start shooting boy girl? Um, Who you're shooting with? Just, yeah. Like, tell me a little bit about this transition. Okay. So I, I've always been strictly girl, girl. I never said though, ever throughout all of the years, which it's been over 10 years, I never once said that I wouldn't do boy girl. Like you'll never be able to find me say that because I just didn't know, you know, if I would do it one day. And I want to- It's smart not to speak in absolutes because you're right. You never know. I I, I always said like, I will never, ever, ever take naked photos. Oh, I saw girls say I would never. And then you, exactly. and then, and then I waited till I was 40 <laughs> and had an OnlyFans. I'm like, okay. Oh so, yeah. I'm going to do it now. <laughs> yeah. Something in you just switches and you're like, mm, why have I waited? I'm just going to do it. But for me, it was because I got married and my husband was wanting to do it with me and I was wanting to do it with him. So I kind of like went to him and was like, just picking his brain at first, like, would you be interested in doing this one day? And he had told me he would consider it. And then, so we, it was, it was also baby steps for, for him, not just baby steps for, for like my fans and subscribers. Cause I definitely wanted to tease them into it, but it was also definitely wanting to make sure that he was comfortable slowly getting into the industry not just like okay we're gonna make a sex video now because I think it would have been too hard for him to just like 
you know, he wasn't in the industry. So he no, knows nothing in regards to like the camera angles and what actually goes into making <laughs> porno. So I was like, okay, it, I have to start small and then we'll work all, work our way, our way there. <laughs> so yeah, now we're like Do you- fully in and I'm like on my third or fourth sex scene, I think. I think it's the fourth one counting do you think do you think you would have gone this route if if you know technology platforms hadn't opened up this opportunity for models to be able to create and monetize their own content like do you think that you would have gone the usual route of like doing your first big and i probably wouldn't have either yeah it wouldn't have happened it wouldn't have happened i wouldn't have done it for anyone else this was i did it because it was for me Mm-hmm. And I did it because I was just different, you know, was, I finally got to make my own set of rules, I guess you could say. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> it was more like, uh, okay, I don't have to rely on anyone wanting this, this and this of me because I know from all my best friends being boy girl performers and what they've told me that it's nothing nothing like girl girl, you know, so I was like, you know, it's just nothing that I wanted to I didn't see myself doing it. I never saw myself really taking the plunge and being that kind, that type of adult performer. Um, and now I am just in a different way. I guess you could call me like, I'm like a real adult actress, but I'm doing amateur porn at home. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and it's crazy, right? Because it's just like, it's been so profitable and it's been so freeing and it's really shifted the power dynamic to the performers oh, yeah. in a way that, you know, I I never expected to see that happen. It's been a really positive change, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially for us being able to, we just going through a pandemic and being able to support ourselves at home. How lucky are we? Like I literally, me and Sheree DeVille and Aaliyah Love, we really just were talking about that stuff. Like that it's wild that we, that we get to do that, you know? I don't know makes me um makes me happy that that I'm that I have this job I'm really lucky I've, I've noticed crazy the- because some people wouldn't like you know they'd be like what are you talking about you're a porn star but dude so many people didn't have jobs it was yeah and I watched so a lot of people in my family lose jobs and it was just crazy yeah and so few people have the freedom and the ability to self-monetize in the way that porn stars do now you know with these mm-hmm personal content platforms. Oh yeah. Um, It's a whole other level. And I think too, also the pandemic and the forced quarantine from a bunch of different sex workers that I've talked to, it actually introduced them to the fact that they could make money on their own. I know a lot of girls told me that, you know, a lot of them were afraid to put all their time and effort into creating their own content because they were so used to the big studio model and, you know, shooting for the big companies and that's how they made their money. And I think a lot of girls feared pulling away from that, right? Because then you have that fear of, oh, if I, you know, say I'm not available, then no one's going to book me anymore. And am I really going to be able to make enough money on my own without the thing is I know that. Yeah. I just, I'm not worried about that per se, only because I feel like, I've made such, I've worked my ass off so hard in this industry that (laughs) I think that if I decided to stay away from mainstream for like five years and then come back, I think I would still shoot. (laughs) I'm not even worried about that just because I feel like I've cemented myself enough to where I have at least a good enough reputation with a, a handful of directors to where if they're still working in X amount of years or any time period in the future, if I, I'm going to go back or whatever, that I don't think I would have a problem. I think they'd be like, yes, finally, <laughs> because I do get asked a lot. Like, yeah. when are you going to come back? When are you coming back? And, and it's like, what can I, I'm like, not right now. <laughs> Sorry. And I don't know when, I don't know when I'm going to return back to Los Angeles because everything is so up in the air. You know, and I might not, I might not because I'm doing so well here and I'm happy at home. (laughs) And, you know, if I want to start bringing girls here, I can do that too. So. Yeah. 
You mentioned earlier about how girl, boy, girl and girl, girl on set is so different um, from what, so you know, some of your friends have told you in, in what ways do you think it's different? Um, since I haven't experienced it myself, just from what I'm hearing stuff, I would just imagine that maybe it's more um, tech technical or when it comes to positions and stuff and camera opening, that seems like it would make the most sense to me of how I'd be like a total newbie if I had ever done that. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I think Aaliyah was the one who told me that when she transitioned, that it was like, whoa, this is this is brand new for me. <laughs> like, this is like, she said it was like starting all over. Like, yeah, like being a, a brand new performer. So I was like, hmm, no, that makes sense though. It's a different energy too, right? Like the female versus the male energy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause there's definitely been male talent on sets before when I've, when I've been like um, an extra or something in a, in one of those movies and I could just tell it's a different, you're right, energy on set. I don't know what it is either. I guess maybe because there's just a dude there. But either way, the makeup artists are so funny. They're always like, hey, she's a girl, girl only performer. You need to go. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, because you're like the touchable, untouchable taboo to them. Like, oh, you yeah. Know, you're like, you're, like, you're, you're the little her. unicorn in the corner. Like, <laughs> yeah, stay away, stay away. <laughs> So uh, since we've so, already established that you are a veteran performing in the industry, how long have you been working in porn, by the way? Since I was 18 and I will be 32 in June. So Wow. So like 14 years. Yeah. I was going to say, I'm like, you're going to make me do math right now. 14 years. It's like so, 13 and a half, 14 years. So that's a decent chunk of time. It will be, will be that. Um, what advice? Oh, yeah. would My you, whole entire adulthood. Yeah. What advice would you give to new girls coming into the industry, especially young girls? Because you came in at 18. I know there's been a lot of discussion around, you know, should the legal age for porn be older? Should it be 21? Is 18 too young? 21. What was your experience like? Well, that's a really good question. <clears throat> you know, I always thought at the time that I was like wise beyond my years. <laughs> so at the time, if you would have asked me, you know, I was very cocky and a little arrogant and like, this is what I want. I am becoming an empowered woman. And I still agree with that. But do I think that they can be young and naive? A hundred percent. At the time, no, I didn't. I didn't think that. Now I look back and I'm like, oh yeah, I was very naive. And there was, you know, a lot of situations where I was just lucky that I had good people around me. So I didn't have anything bad or any weird type of situation happen to me, like I've heard from other girls. But like I wasn't taken advantage of, I mean. But um, I don't know, you know, if I could give them a piece of advice, it would probably be surround yourself with good people. And I know that's hard to determine which ones can be good and bad, but follow your instinct. And it's in my personal opinion, it's good to stay close to family or someone that that you trust and um, take care of your health. Oh, my gosh. Your hygiene is everything. Take care of yourself. If you know what I'm saying down there, uh, go to your gynecologist. Like these are absolute musts that I had, uh, that I had older performers tell me like, God, there were so many of them um, who were like India. She, she was a big one that was like, this is what you need to do. India summer. Yeah. India summer. And so she, she literally was kind of like my porno godmother, like just 
took me in, showed me the ways, told me not just like, she literally showed me how to like make love. I mean, really, I feel like she taught me how to be like a better lover when I would come home to my, to my man. I genuinely feel that way. Her and a lot of all the older performers that were 40 and older, because I worked with a lot of them uh, with girlfriends films. And I'm sorry, I, I kind of went off subject there. I just realized. <laughs> Was no, 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 no. That's fine. Actually, I, I like this. I like this tangent that we're going on. Could you maybe tell me what, are there any specific pointers that you remember that, that women like India gave you that you feel like made you a better lover? Oh, this is good. Take your time. <clears throat> Take your time. That was like a huge thing. Most, most young girls are very like, come out the camera, you know, like they're just very like, attack mode very like they think that they need to be they think they need to be more you know like more vigorous or more aggressive in order for it to be a good scene no that is not the case whatsoever you need to feel passionate and in order to have passion you just need to slow down feel the moment and like enjoy yourself like truly enjoy yourself but you can't do that if you're just trying to put, you know, put on a show, you know, you can't be putting on a show. I didn't win my first awards because I was putting on a show at all. It was literally because I was enjoying myself in the scene. And because I was having these women literally teach me, like, if you watch any of my old scenes, you're watching me learn how to have, how to have sex pretty much in real life, not just, you know, just not the camera just happened to be there technically, even though I'm acting in the other scenes, like that's all real. That was real. So, yeah. So um, what are some of your favorite performers that you've worked with? Like if people were to go back and be like, okay, I want to like go check out some classic Shyla Jennings scenes. <laughs> scenes. What would okay. you recommend? Um, what great pairings um, really stick out for you? Okay, well, India is going to be my first one because she was my first scene ever. And then I worked with her throughout my entire career. Like she was always my stepmommy. Can, uh, can, can I ask you what your first scene, like what company was that that was for? Because I know you would love to watch people's first scenes. My first scene was for Girlfriends Films. It was right whenever, um, oh man, whenever tiger woods had that big scandal happen and so the scene which is actually, one <laughs> which the, one oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. with all the women okay when he when he cheated on his wife okay the biggest okay. one but i know it was kind of spiraling he had it was a long episode i watched that all <laughs> yeah i watched that documentary. <laughs> but, but um but the but the main thing where he's getting a divorce and all these 20 women are coming out okay so dan from girlfriends films basically redid the whole scene, but with women. So there's a TJ Woods, I think was her name. And yeah, that was the character. And India was TJ Woods lawyer. And I happened to be one of TJ Woods mistresses. So that was the scene. I don't remember. I was wearing a leather jacket and a blue shirt. I don't remember the, the, which, what the name of it was though. But okay. if you find me, it's there. It's out there. <laughs> Internet sleuths, you've you've got your clues. You can track it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. I love this. Um, guys, hang on tight. We're going to take a quick commercial break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about how Shyla got into the industry. So hang tight. Summer is here, and Manscaped is here to help you level up your full body grooming game. Their Lawnmower 3.0 is a revolutionary electric trimmer. It's cordless, it's waterproof, and it is guaranteed not to nick or snag your nuts. And if you want to use it on your chest hair, it actually has different settings so you can get the perfect length, whether or not you're the kind of guy who likes to be a little bearish or maybe actually wants a bare chest, literally. You can get all of this inside the perfect package where you will find the crop preserver, an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer, as well as the crop reviver, a testy toner that is designed to give you a pep in your step. If you subscribe to the perfect package, you will get a blade refill for your lawnmower trimmer delivered to your door every three months. So what are you waiting for? Make this your best and most hairless 
summer ever. Go to manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. That's manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping. Okay, everyone, we are back. So Shyla, tell us how you got into this sordid business in the first place. Okay, well, I was 18. I was a struggling, (laughs) struggling teenager. And I had a girlfriend of mine who was like, hey, because I I live in San Antonio. I was like, she told me, you can make some money if you go to Houston. And I know this photographer down there. And he shoots nude, nude models. And I was like, "Mm, you know, I don't know. I don't know if that's for me. But then some time passed and I started getting like really interested in that kind of stuff. And I read Jenna Jameson's book and some other stuff like that started watching like the porn awards. I was like, you know what? I'm going to check it out. So I went and literally within like the first five minutes of me being there, I just felt like I was meant to be there. And I literally stripped off my clothes. I was wearing black high leather boots. They were my favorite boots. I never took them off. They were like, I wore them for like two years straight. I swear, like 17, 18, 19 years old, three years. So yeah, I'm 18 years old, taking off my clothes, slathering baby oil all over myself. And the photographer starts taking my pictures and stuff. I'm feeling myself. Smashing Pumpkins, I think was playing. (laughs) And... Wow, you really have an eye, like a remembrance for details. It's kind of amazing. <laughs> That's funny. And when we got done, he went on to gfy.com. You know what that is? Oh, yeah, go yeah, fuck yourself.com. Like, yes. It's like yeah, a web. Yeah. So, for those people who don't know, because a lot of people who are not in the industry listen to this, it's like a webmaster resource. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like a webmaster know. resource. Connect. Very, so, very big. Uh, yeah. So like they posted, he posted my pictures on there. Hustler saw them and was like, well, we want to buy them. Uh, He asked me if I was okay with it. And I was like, you're joking, right? I thought, I didn't think it could be real. They did. They bought all, all my photo sets, in fact, that I took that day and put them on the cover of their magazine of the barely legal one. And then after that, I was like, well, shit. Maybe this is like, maybe I have, there's something to this and I'm really enjoying myself and the money's pretty good. I was like, all right. So I called my parents literally that day <laughs> and I told them, I told them both. And, they and both how did that just, go? <clears throat> they're both very like, uh, eccentric, uh, liberal people. <laughs> so they really didn't have a problem with it. They were just more like, well, I think they thought it was going to be a phase, to be honest with you. I really think at that point they thought, oh, well, it's just going to be a phase for her. Let her go have fun. No, it wasn't a phase. You know, then after, I mean, after that, it's kind of pretty much history because then Hustler flew me out there. I was on the cover of their actual magazine. And then I just started doing magazine work with all these photographers and met Cam Smith this manager and uh he got me more bookings and that's pretty much how it all happened I just started flying back and forth flying back and forth but with my parents uh they didn't really they didn't care it wasn't until probably like once I got started doing movies which was years later that's when they started being like oh so you don't you don't really plan on doing anything else right and I was like no like I don't want to do anything else like I'm setting goals for myself within the industry and I want to accomplish these. And so that's what I did. And they ha- they don't have a problem with it. They're used to it. My whole family knows no one cares. Now it's yeah. just like, oh yeah, she's just doing her thing. And I mean, and look at where it's brought you now. I mean, now you can be like completely yeah. self-sufficient and like living off of exactly. shooting stuff at home. They must, how, how do they no feel about that? Care. Like, oh yeah. yeah. This bit, this year was a huge eye opener for for people who may have had their doubts about me and my family, we're like, well, what can we say now? You know, like, what can they say? Mm-hmm. Like I'm take care, taking care of my home and a dozen animals with, with my porn income. So. <laughs> it's funny, <laughs> right? Because this year, you know, like OnlyFans has become like a household name this year alone. Well, and we're seeing all these itself. stories. 
yeah, we're seeing all these stories about like, you know, regular people starting an OnlyFans to, to supplement their income or just to have any income whatsoever yeah. because many people are out of work because of the quarantine. So we've seen like this huge Absolutely. surge of people getting into I've seen it saving people. Yeah. I've even seen very like older women that are like in their sixties who have started them and are literally taking care of themselves and their families now. Like that's amazing. It's amazing. That's incredible. I don't know how anyone could hate on that. Like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, um, it's, it's pretty incredible the way that it's really changed. The, the adult industry is always going through these big changes, but I feel like this past year has been some of the biggest shifts I've ever seen in my 22 years in the industry. It's been such oh, an yeah. interesting thing to see. And it's also, I think, been struggling for people on the other side of the camera too, I've noticed. So that, that was hard to watch. I, mm -hmm. I can only hope that my friends that are behind the cameras have figured it out now and thank God there are, you know, studios shooting again. So well, but also too, like a lot of these girls are hiring people to shoot them oh, for great. like their only fans. I mean, like, let's talk about like our that's mutual amazing. friend Dean Capture. You know what I mean? Like, look at it. He's like the only fans king now. Like he's just Good shooting everybody's only fans. He, I had him shoot my maternity. Yeah, that's fantastic. Picture. Yeah. That's so fantastic. Good for him. He needed that. He definitely needed that. That's so huge. So yeah, <laughs> I love Dean and I miss him. Yeah. I just miss no, everyone. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you'll have to come back to LA and shoot sometime on your own terms. Yeah. That's what I figured. Like Sheree keeps saying, you know, you come back here, we're going to do it. <laughs> like, I know, I know it's going to be, it's going to happen. It's going to happen eventually. So, yeah. you know, that reminds me, I did ask you a question that we went off on kind of a tangent, but I asked you who your favorite female performers to work with were. And then you mentioned and India mentioned and then we went on a whole India and then I will off. Yeah. That's hilarious. I completely <laughs> forgot that. Um, okay. Others, Shree. Oh my God. That woman is amazing. She's she like, so amazing. not just only one of my best friends, but she's just, she's just such a good person all around. Mm -hmm. And her work ethic is so incredible. Like, you know how, like, there's that saying, what would Jesus do? I'm constantly telling my husband, what would Shree do? <laughs> what would Shree do? <laughs> I'm not even kidding. So true. <laughs> like what? All right, the situation I'm in, and if I don't know what to do, I text her. <laughs> I'm like, okay, what should I do? Because <laughs> you're gonna know. She's gonna have the best advice. But all around, she's a great person, amazing performer. I love having sex with her. She's just fantastic. So some of my other girls, AJ Applegate. <sighs> one of the loves of my life. Um, me and her became super, super close as well. But man, I really like, I have a crush on her. It's real hard whenever I'm around her not to get all like hot and bothered. And she knows it too. <laughs> so like when I first <laughs> met her, I said, I was like, yeah, I have a thing for blondes. And I looked right at her. <laughs> and she was like, okay. <laughs> and we've kind of just been best friends ever since. So yeah <laughs> she's a favorite um jenna sativa oh jenna a cuban goddess i mean everything about jenna is just like so kissable and squeezable you just want to touch <laughs> i haven't been with a girl by the way for a while so like really i couldn't tell <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's killing me so yeah <laughs> uh she's one of my favorites annika I miss Annika. Me and her did some fantastic scenes together. Actually, a lot of fantastic scenes. Uh, one time for Girlfriends Films, we did a scene where we both orgasmed from just kissing. Really? So that's like a thing that can happen. I mean, it's only happened to me in my dreams and then with her. Wow. That's the only two times that's ever, you know, like I've, I've had it happen in my sleep when because I vivid, I, I lucid dream. So mm. I, you know, I can orgasm in my sleep, but that's very rare. You know? But with, yeah, I did that with Annika. <laughs> you can see that scene, another girlfriend's films putting out historical moments. <laughs> so wait, were you like touching yourself at all? No, wow. that's no, crazy. just from us, like just hardcore making out like, like we were young. <laughs> 
So yeah, just, I don't know. There's something about her. Me and her had really intense chemistry. So I could have seen myself like dating her. I think that's probably why is we just were really yeah. into one another. And I'm just going to throw in one name there that I know you're going to bring up. Cause I know like when people are like, who are your favorites? It's you always like forget somebody that's like really important to you. Um, I just got to throw Aaliyah Love in there. I was about to say Aaliyah. I was about to say I Aaliyah. You, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> she was going up next. Because I know you guys are really close. So she's I was like, she's like, oh, there's there's honestly no one closer to me than her. Out of everyone that I've mentioned, um, she's actually like, I call her like my twin flame or something. Like we have, we share like a soul sometimes. It's really weird. Like the both of us um, are just so the same on so many different levels. Like we have a very similar personality sometimes. I don't know. We get each other is really what it is. Maybe it's because we're both Gemini. I don't know. I'm into horoscopes, so <laughs> I'm not sure. But but yeah, me and her have known each other a very long time, like well over 10 years. And she, we've done a lot, a lot of scenes together and they're all super spicy. And yeah, I, I stay with her when I'm in Los Angeles I just love her so much. It hurts. <laughs> she's she's so. so funny. She's one of my favorite people to be on set with because she's just laugh. hilarious. The shit yeah. that comes out of that girl's mouth and she just says this stuff and you're like, wait, did she mean that? But she yeah. fucking means it. And it's so Me and her are either fun. laughing together or crying together. Like that's our relationship where we like really when I have anything in my life going on, she's who I'm like, you know, Sheree, I'm texting for like guidance on stuff and Aaliyah, I'm texting for like when my heart is like broken or like if I'm going through something intense, like she's the person that I'm like, I like, I don't know. She has to know, you know, like she knows everything. There is not one thing in my entire life that she does not know about that I haven't told her. Like she knows everything. And same for me with her. So <laughs> I love her. I'm going to cry. I miss them. Oh my God. No, we love her too. So yeah, I miss my I miss my friends. All right. Well, we're gonna take a commercial break so you can collect yourself. <laughs> and then uh when we come back, we're gonna talk about your crazy set stories, including yes. the yes. infamous 10 girl orgy. So oh, yeah. hang tight, guys. We'll be right back. If you're here, it's probably because you're a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall Unfiltered. Well, that's great because I'm a fan of my podcast too. Now, if you don't know what Patreon is, it's a crowdfunding platform that allows people to make contributions on a monthly basis. Because this podcast costs money to make, maybe even more so than others. I'm obsessed with quality. So since the beginning, I have always recorded in a studio, had a professional sound engineer, and recorded professional video. All of these things cost money, as you can imagine. And I also made a pretty scary decision this year to cut down on my directing gigs so that I could focus more on this podcast, which is why I need your help now more than ever. But don't worry, I'm not asking you to give me something for nothing. In exchange for your contributions, I offer so many perks. For example, access to the live streams of all of my interviews, a bonus podcast that I do called My LA Porn Life, Q and A's where the stars answer your specific questions, behind the scenes interviews, merchandise such as mugs, shirts, and stickers, access to my private Snapchat, and so much more. You can join for as little as $5 a month and help me change the way the world sees the adult industry and sex work. So take a look around and see everything that I have to offer. I really hope that you'll join and be a part of our little community. Okay, guys, we are back. So, Shyla, I know that after being in the industry for 14 years, you must have a lot of crazy stories. So please, <laughs> please tell them yes. because I love crazy set stories. Crazy set stories. Okay, so like in terms of sex, I'm going to go with, I've done quite a few orgies. Actually, I've done a lot. But my some of my favorites are the bi the big ones. One of them actually was with Aaliyah. Uh, what was the name of that? Maybe Pussycat Club or it was like it was supposed to be like a fight girl club. It was something like that. Anyways, 
<laughs> Maybe one of you guys can look it up or something. But um, okay, Ten Girl Orgy, so many toys and so much going on. Really, when there's that many vaginas, it's just kind of hard to keep track. And I honestly don't even know if I had if I got to fuck every single girl because I think I tried, but I'm pretty sure I may have missed one or two. <laughs> there's just so many of them, and then it's just everywhere. I mean. I miss that. <laughs> it's funny. I have to say, I've shot a couple of orgies in my life and I very much like it because it's too chaotic. There's too many people. It's really so hard to block. On. It's hard to block it, right? Block it out. Like, because there's a lot of blocking. That's not, like, that's not going to happen. Better. You know, it's just kind of need oh. to let things flow spontaneously. And if, you know, I think the last time I did one like that was many years ago. It was probably like five years ago or something. So since then, I feel like technology's just come up a tiny bit more and maybe it would just, I think that now you just need to do a whole room full of cameras. So it gets all angles, all sides of everything. So yeah, it's definitely are- a bitch to shoot. It's also a bitch to produce because trying to control and get 10 girls through makeup <sighs> and like wardrobe and then like and then you have cancellation. One girl. I, mean, I can only imagine. Oh, uh, like where's so and so? She's in the fucking bathroom. Okay, finally she comes back from the bathroom. Where's so and so? Oh, she's having a cigarette. Yeah, and the crew guys are chasing girls down. Yeah. <laughs> Just chasing girls around, like, get on fucking set, god damn it. Yeah, because one girl's always leaving. That's always yeah. the thing is you get yeah. so and so you get three girls in and two girls leave. You're like, wait, we just had yeah. three girls in here. Where's the other two? Oh, they went outside. <laughs> Oh my God. It's so annoying. <laughs> That's so funny. Sure. Her eyelash is coming off. She needs another one. So yeah. So many eyelashes to have to deal with. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But I think some of my other crazy stories, let's see. Um, I'm like really having to think right now. It's like, those are always going to be my favorites. The, the big, the big orgy things. Um, otherwise I guess my, my crazy stories would have to be uh, when we're doing big productions, big movies. Oh gosh. When they're like for days on end, you know, like six days or something, things can get hectic, you know, like shit can get a little crazy. You become like a weird, odd family together because everyone has gotten to know each other so well. And then recording into like, deep into the night. And so I think a lot of my crazy stories probably stem from doing sex scenes at like three in the morning when everyone's just a little bit like delirious and we're all cracking each other up. I think one of my favorite ones, anytime Abigail is around and it gets late at night, I mean, she's hysterical anyways. Abigail Mack. Yeah, Abigail Mack. When it gets like past like nine o'clock, past her bedtime she gets a little like quirky and it's like my favorite ever and she's just so hilarious I mean every time because I've done a quite a few big movies with her uh vampires was one of them for girls way we've done we've done a few and uh yeah she's always cracking me up we're always having so much fun on set so I think I think just us being total goofballs I think it would be fun just to sit down with like her and some of the girls that I've done those big movies with just to watch all of our behind the scenes stuff. Cause we're just so crazy and silly. Like the stuff coming out of our mouths at one in the morning is just like, what are they talking about? But we're all laughing. Can't stop. Yeah. <laughs> all the crew is like crying. They're like, Oh, I just want to go like, Please. I'm tired. Let's get this going. We're like, we can't stop laughing. <laughs> when you do hit like that delirious phase, when I was shooting features for Wicked, because same thing, like they go on really late, you know, like 18 hours. Oh, yeah. Day, um, I would always say like, I lose my sense of humor after 10 p.m. <laughs> you know, like once we're past 10 p.m., like nothing is funny to me anymore. <laughs> so like, stop oh, you're the complete opposite. That's so funny. <laughs> Oh, you poor thing. Then it'd be horrible for you with us. <laughs> like, I yeah, think it's funny it's anymore. Yeah, it's not funny, guys. Come on, let's get this done. Uh, yeah, but like when you're doing, because I've actually been talent on, like when I did my Playboy TV show, I was like the talent, which was so weird. Um, 
And it's definitely a different dynamic because it's funny because the director would yell at me all the time for like goofing around and fucking off and laughing. And so it was like, like a total weird. role reversal. Yeah, it was really weird. <laughs> so I, yeah, I've been there. This is definitely not the... Yeah. So what are some of your... Do you actually prefer doing Gonzo or do you prefer doing features? <sighs> I, that's so hard. I think it depends on the day. <laughs> I think it depends on my mood, to be honest with you, because there are days whenever I rather just go to set and have fun, have sex and leave, you know, like go have lunch with a girl afterwards. But then there are those times, and this is me most of the time where I love acting and I love features because the makeup, the costumes, just everything that goes into it, I'm all about it. So I like getting a big script and being like, Ooh, I have all these pages to memorize. Like, I don't know. It makes me feel like, but I don't know. It just makes me feel good. And I've always loved acting. I've been acting since I was like four years old. So I would yeah. say, yeah, it's, it's, it's funny because it's more because I've shot features and I've shot guns. I've shot everything. And for me, I know that like going into a feature, it's a lot more stressful because there's so many like moving parts yeah. and it's much more money and longer days and more days and more people. But in the mm -hmm. end, like I'm always so much more excited about a feature coming out than a gonzo scene coming out because you put so much time and effort into it. It's really cool to see it's the special. fruits of your labor. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's special. And when you watch those things, you're like, wow, I can't believe I did that. Like a lot of people don't know. I don't, I very rarely watch my own stuff. But when I do watch it <clears throat> and it's something mainstream, I'm always like, oh, look at what we created. <laughs> like, oh, that's so awesome. So, yeah, it makes me proud and happy that. What are some of your favorite movies? What are some of your favorite features that you've done? Business of Women. That was a fun one. Um, that, that was for? with. That was for, I think that was. It was adult time now. I think it was Girls' Way. And okay. uh, I think it was one of their first big features. That one was, I have pretty much everything I've done for Girls' Way adult time has been one of my favorites. I always have so much fun with all the crew, with all the set, and all the scripts are fun. But Business of Women was great because I got to play like a young, crazy, wild thing. And I wore my leather jacket and my leather boots. And we went and shot downtown like, and I'm just supposed to be just walking on the roads by myself because I'm one of those like lost, <laughs> lost young girls or whatever. And I get picked up by a hot woman who happens to be Vanessa Veracruz. And, and she introduces me to, I think that was Abigail. That was, like, I think my first, my first time shooting with Abigail, I'm pretty sure. Now I think about it. Oh, wow. You're taking me back to some memories. <laughs> and so those that was a lot of fun then all of the, the vampire stuff with Jelena Jensen um vampires that was great that was a big cast of girls um I played a blind person so that was very interesting for me doing sex scenes blind was very hard <laughs> to say the least I didn't realize that that was gonna take so much effort I had to study beforehand during and after and make sure that the whole time I'm holding my eyes in a certain position. I really had to do my research on that one. So that one was probably one of the harder roles I ever did, but it was still fun and I enjoyed it. So yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Um and then uh what about Gonzo? Any particular Gonzo scenes that you love that you did? Mm, okay. So like I love there's everything it's hard for one in particular I think a lot of the stuff that I've shot for like twisties is considered gonzo right or no would that be considered gonzo not not necessarily it's yeah like yeah I guess so I mean it, it it used to be it's changed a lot since you um stop shooting we're doing more yeah. like dialogue based see it depends actually it goes back and forth sometimes there's no dialogue and sometimes there's like 
a whole scenario. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Kind of- okay. So not them then, not anymore. I guess but you I could say great ones gone, in though. the past from them. Yeah. And you know what? I really honestly can't think of any at the top of my head. I probably, because the majority of the roles that I end up taking are all scripts now that I think about it. I mean, majority of the stuff that I've shot has been scripted. Um, yeah. <laughs> but anything that has to do with me getting glamorous well, think- is going to be my favorite. <laughs> yeah. So like anything that I've shot. I think shot- also too, like it's so hard. No, I was gonna say it's so, it's so hard to find girls who can act and can like remember their lines. So um, when you're shooting features, I know like for me, I would tend to really gravitate towards the girls who I knew could manage doing yeah, lines, those type of days. could do dialogue, for sure. were professional, would show up because yeah. you have to shoot so much in a day. If you are working with someone new who can't remember their lines, who doesn't know what they're doing who's taking a really long time, it fucks your schedule so bad. Oh yeah. I can only imagine. Oh yeah. I think, I, I think we I dealt with that stuff <laughs> on set before, or I've seen it. I've been the witness to what's going on. What can you do? I just sit there in silence. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to look at my script now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, Shyla, thank you so much. It was so great to connect with you. I actually do have a bunch of questions for you for my Patreon members, but we're going to do that in a bonus Q&A um, right after cool. we wrap this exclusively for my Patreon members. So make sure that you join me at patreon.com slash Unfiltered to get access to this exclusive Q&A plus many others. But Shyla, can you sign off for everybody else and let them know where they can find you online? Yes, I'm Shyla Jennings, and you can find me on Instagram, Shyla Jennings XX, Twitter, ShylaJ.com. That's the that's my actual username, ShylaJ.com. Um, also, ShylaJ.com, my website, and my OnlyFans, OnlyShyla.com. Which is the only place where we can see you with a penis. And there I know you can find my boy. A lot girl. of people are very excited yes. about that new development. Exclusive. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so exclusive. go watch it. So congratulations on that. <laughs> Thank you. And you guys, as always, can find me on Twitter at Holly Randall and on Instagram at Holly Randall. And as I mentioned before, join my Patreon, patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered to access um, all of my exclusive content thank you guys so much for listening shyla again thank you so much for joining us thank you so much holly we will see you next week manscaped is here to up your body grooming game their lawnmower 3.0 is a revolutionary electric trimmer that will not only not nick or snag your nuts, but can also be used on your chest hair. If you get it in the perfect package 3.0, it will come with a bunch of liquid formulas to keep you feeling and smelling fresh all day. And for a limited time, you can also get a free travel bag and anti-chafing boxer briefs that come with it. So go to manscaped.com, use code HRU for 20% off plus free shipping.